The America Competes Act has passed the House in a 22 to 10 vote, which means the Lacey Act is in the Senate and one step closer to becoming law. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I uploaded a video a couple of days ago sounding the alarm and giving a quick overview as to how these restrictions could affect us not just as exotic pet keepers, but businesses, breeders, and the community as a whole. I will link the video in the card above, so if you haven't seen it, pause this video right now and go watch that, and then come back to this video to get filled in on the rest. Since uploading that video on YouTube and posting a one minute video I made for Instagram Reels and TikTok, there has been a wide range of comments, not just on my videos, but on videos and posts from other content creators in many different niches of the exotic pet hobby. And some of the most concerning comments have not come from outside of the hobby, but from people that keep some of the species that will be most affected if this law passes. As a society, we are in a very reactionary time. We read a headline or a tweet and we fill in the details with our own assumptions and biases biases, then confuse our feelings with facts. This is very destructive as it muddles the truth and divides communities. So we're gonna look at the most common reactions from exotic pet keepers, and counter these opinions and assumptions with facts and evidence. I have broken down the comments into five different types of reactions, and you may recognize them as the five stages of grief. And I think that's exactly what we're going through as an exotic pet community. We love our pets, and we love the community that's grown around these amazing animals. Some of us have have entire careers and livelihoods built around these hobbies. And this legislation threatens to destroy all of that. It's very scary. If you left any of these comments, I'm not judging you and I'm not making fun of you. I'm saying that I can relate and I can understand where you're coming from. All of these emotions have their root in fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of what we don't understand, fear of not getting what we want, and the fear of losing what we have. My hope is that by the end of this video, we will all be able to overcome our fears and face this issue head on as a community. Because as we have all learned, courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. Now the first and most common response seems to be denial. Believing this bill is too broad and ridiculous to be true, or if true, will never pass into law. Like telling people that they're overreacting or just being ridiculous. Some have even accused people like myself of over-dramatizing the situation just to get views. And I can relate because that was my initial reaction as well. I thought this was just political pandering by a few members of Congress to appease their constituents or campaign donors by trying to introduce an amendment that has no chance of passing. So come re-election time, they could point at this bill and say, look, I'm trying. But once this bill came out of committee and went to the floor of the House, things became very real, very quick. And looking closer, you can see the insidious way this is being handled. The Lacey Act Amendment was slipped in at the last moment to avoid attention and pushback from the millions of Americans who would be affected, and to bypass congressional hearings because it proposes major changes to the Lacey Act that regulate species deemed by U.S. Fish and Wildlife to be injurious. The guise is that they're protecting the country from invasive species. But the true goal is to ban as much wildlife trade as possible. Many of the organizations pushing this change oppose keeping animals in zoos, public aquariums, research facilities, and even as pets. While these organizations do not have the public support to implement their agenda, they do have a history of hiding their initiatives in legitimate bills to achieve their ideological goals bit by bit. The threat is real, and sticking your head in the sand and pretending like it doesn't exist will not make it go away. The second most common response seems to be anger. People blaming partisan politics, being divisive or insulting, or making hyperbolic statements like threatening to overthrow the government, or just illegally smuggling species across state lines. But this is basic keyboard warrior tough guy reactions. They fail to realize that if all imports stop, it doesn't matter how easy it is to transport a species from state to state, because there will be no species available in most states very quickly. In my opinion, the most divisive and the most inaccurate response is this political partisanship. Conservatives blaming liberals, Democrats blaming Republicans. And this could not be further from reality. This is not a red versus blue, left versus right issue. This is a people versus the federal government issue. This bill has bipartisan support in the House and Senate. It is sponsored by U.S. Senators Marco Rubio, who is a Republican from Florida, and Brian Schatz, who is a Democrat from Hawaii. And the organizations pushing this legislation behind the scenes are working both sides of the aisle. So simplifying this down in a one-sentence comment blaming whatever political party you oppose only succeeds in dividing us as a community at the moment it couldn't be more important for us to come together as one. 
Now this next reaction comes from people that are bargaining or playing devil's advocate. These people are saying something needs to be done about invasive species destroying local ecosystems and damaging or eradicating native species. And they are right, more should be done. But this is not the right way or even the most effective way to achieve that. In general, they seem to think they won't ban as many species as we fear. We can trust the government to do the right thing and look out for our rights. But make no mistake, this legislation will dramatically change the hobby and the pet trade as we know it, resulting in significantly reduced availability of species, diminished interest in pet keeping, drastically reducing the size of the industry, which will result in substantial job losses, both in the US and other countries, and cause an extreme reduction in the scientific, economic, cultural, educational, and conservation benefits of the bird, reptile, amphibian, invertebrate, and aquarium hobbies and trades. The Lacey Act is a federal law, meaning if a species could be injurious anywhere in the United States, including its territories and possessions, it could be banned. The U.S. has a very diverse environment, and effectively regulating potentially invasive species in Ohio or Minnesota requires evaluating drastically different criteria than in Florida or Hawaii. However, the Lacey Act is inflexible and leaves no room for more localized regulations. If a species could be a threat in South Florida, it is deemed to be a threat in Minnesota as well. White lists also create enforcement problems. With a blacklist, law enforcement primarily needs to be able to identify protected and banned species. While this can create some regulatory difficulties, these issues are exponentially worse when implementing a whitelist, as practical enforcement of a whitelist will require law enforcement officials to reliably identify every species, whether listed or not. This is impossible as millions of species exist on the planet. Therefore, it is likely species that present effectively no risk of actually being injurious would be excluded from the whitelist due to a perceived burden to law enforcement, whether reasonable or not. Customs officials and wildlife inspection agents at ports of entry are tasked with clearing shipments of wildlife imported from abroad. Getting these shipments cleared and to their final destination as quickly as possible is paramount for the health and welfare of the animals. Misidentifications and mistakes by inspectors can lead to holding and seizure of perfectly legal shipments, resulting in significant stress on the animals being transported. This can already be an issue with the current regulatory framework, but moving from a current Lacey Act blacklist to a whitelist would result in even more instances of mistakes mistakenly held and seized shipments due to the increased complexity for custom officials and inspection agents. This will significantly increase the cost of enforcement and reduce animal welfare by potentially prolonging the transit time. Others seem to be just overcome with the feeling of depression or feeling so overwhelmed at the prospect that your initial reaction is to just get rid of everything, either from just panic or the feeling of defeat. The Fish and Wildlife Service has already tried to implement bans on moving exotic pets across state lines, and US ARC fought them in court and in 2017 won in the DC Circuit Court of Appeals. Since they were unable to win arguing the law in court, they have decided to just change the law. And that is very frustrating and daunting. What animals will be on the white list has yet to be disclosed, but species not automatically included will most likely have to go through a lot of red tape and legal expense to be added. Lawyers will need to be hired, going species by species, submitting scientific data, environmental impact studies, arguing why this species should be included on the white list. And you best believe the organizations lobbying for this legislation to be passed will be funding the lawyers on the other side, trying to make adding any species to the white list expensive and time consuming, if not virtually impossible. Many people have found that caring for these exotic pets has helped them in dealing with their depression, anxiety, or PTSD. Others have successfully used keeping exotic pets as a method of overcoming their addiction issues with drugs and alcohol, as caring for these animals has replaced the obsession to use intoxicating chemicals to fill the void. There are many instances where people have found peace and purpose in caring for and building loving relationships with these amazing creatures. And the thought of that being taken away so flippantly is daunting. So they've already given up and say there isn't anything we can do but accept our fate. When in reality, there is still time to contact your senators and make your voice heard. Share your experiences and let them know you do not support this amendment as it is written and that this is an issue best left to the states. We cannot give up before this battle is finished.
Acceptance, or maybe a better word to describe this would be apathy, is the attitude that the federal government is just too big, too powerful, or too corrupt for us to be able to make any changes. And we might as well just sit back and accept our fate. Some even suggest just taking the hobby underground if the law is passed. And that is a dangerous notion. We should not be criminalized for being responsible pet owners. We must accept the things in life that we cannot change, but we should also have the courage to change the things that we can. And if we work together as a community, we can make a difference. And we do have the power to implement change. But we must stop fighting with each other in our respective niches. And we must stop blaming the other hobbies or other keepers for the current situation. Or assume they're going after one type of exotic animal and will ignore the type of animal that you prefer to keep. Whether you keep reptiles, mammals, fish, birds, or invertebrates, right now we are all on the same side. Yes, there are issues that need to be addressed within the industry and as keepers. But first, we must band together and stop this amendment from becoming law. Once that is accomplished, we can look inward and begin to rectify the problems that exist and even work more with conservation and preservation efforts to create common sense regulations that benefit us all. But we can't even begin that conversation until this extreme government overreach has been dealt with and the overriding threat it presents has been eliminated. So buck up and choose to respond rather than react. Cultivate the courage to do more than just complain and troll in the comment sections. One email to your senator is more effective than sharing a thousand posts on social media. Choose to be the difference that you want to see in the world. Together we can beat this injustice and become stronger as a community for having gone through it.